Good morning, welcome to all. This 19th Sunday after Pentecost. And well, times have changed a little bit for us. Now we're in a little cooler weather. Wow, thanks be to God. And what a change that is to come and see some sweaters. And this, this week I went to Borderland and I saw a couple of people with name tags on. What does that mean? <laughs> Park name tags, that is. And our friends from the north are coming back, starting to come back. And so, it is a good time to, to be in God's church, to do his work, to be in his vineyard, to share his good news in all seasons, in this season of fall. And especially we hear the story about the vineyard, about the workers in the vineyard. Some of them were not good, and God had to take it away from them because they actually killed the Son, Jesus Christ, and he gives his vineyard to others, to you and me, to serve, proclaim Jesus as the rock of our salvation, the chief cornerstone who has given his life that we may have life. And this is the message we proclaim in this season always. Blessings on your worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, that by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice in the Lord of Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you also be gotten, the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah chapter 5 beginning with the first verse. Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, please, between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. 
I will take away its hedge, and it shall be burned, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain, they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold oppression, for righteousness, but beheld a cry for help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Psalm 80. Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root, and it filled the land. She sent out her bows to the sea and her branches to the river. The boar out of the woods uproots it, and the wild beast of the field devours it. And the vineyard which your right hand has planted, and the branch that you made strong for yourself. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man whom you made strong for yourself. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Restore us, O God of hosts, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Well, today's Gospel reading is, again, talking about Pharisees, the ones we just heard about who, who killed the Son of God. They're not fair, you see, and so they weren't teaching the sheep the good things about Jesus' love. So we're going to sing the sheep song about how God loves you and he teaches you about his forgiveness and salvation in Jesus. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, ba, ba. I don't want to be a goat, no, I don't want to be a goat, no, cause there's no hope, no, I don't want to be a goat, so no. what do you want to be? A sheep. Ba, 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 I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 and I pray the Lord my soul to keep, I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 I don't want to be a Pharisee, a Pharisee, I don't want to be a Pharisee, because they're not fair, you see. Oh, so what do you want to be? A sheep. I just want to be a sheep. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. All right, let's have a seat, everyone. And you know what? I brought something here that, that tells us a story about what the about what these Pharisees, these teachers of the church, were doing. They saw Jesus, and they, they knew he was the Son of God, and they, they knew that he was sent from God. He, they saw his miracles, they heard his teaching, and Jesus kept telling them who he was. I am the Son of God, and what did they do? They took the rock and threw it away, discarded it. No good, you're no good. And what did they do? They killed him. They killed Jesus on the cross. They rejected Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, we just heard that God had given the people of Israel this beautiful vineyard. They planted vines in, the choicest vines, a hedge around it to protect it. And then when Jesus came, they rejected him. But guess what? God turned this bad into good. Because that rock that was thrown away I found this, this rock just out outside my house in the rock garden. And look what it's in the shape of. A heart. Can you imagine that? 
I rock in the shape of heart. It reminds us that Jesus is love. God is love. And his great love for us turned that evil of the Pharisees, of the people who killed Jesus, into salvation for us. By his death on the cross, we are saved. So I also have a couple crosses here. A couple crosses that remind us of how beautiful and marvelous this is in God's eyes. All the different colors that, that were painted on this cross remind us that we are united with Jesus. We are built on the rock of Jesus, part of his church. You and I are precious stones, sheep of his, of his people, of, of his, of his uh, pasture. And then his sheep hear his voice and follow him, not the bad teachings of the Pharisees, for Jesus leads us to heaven. Wow, this is marvelous in our eyes. He is the rock that's a living rock, and you two are living. So, sheep, go in his peace. The epistle reading is found in Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 4. If anyone thinks, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I, have also, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to, appre to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Hear another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower, and he leased it to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all he sent his son to them saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men, men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls it will grind him to powder. Now when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived 
that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Christ his message is bringing. I know my own, my own know me. You not the world, my face shall see. My peace I leave with you. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Amen. And our text is from our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Here ends our text. This summer, when our family was visiting my parents in Lakeland, we took a little trip to a children's museum there in Lakeland. And as you walked into it, the first thing that caught your eye, you couldn't miss it, was a big dragon hanging from the ceiling. And what really caught your attention was that it was beautiful and colorful. And as you looked at it closely, you saw it was made up of toys. <laughs> Old, discarded toys. Toys which nobody had any use for. Little cars, little rattles, little things all glued in together and made a beautiful mosaic. So that when a little child walked by, it evoked memories of playing with those toys and said, look, I know about, I had that toy, or look at that one. Isn't it true that something that seems seemingly insignificant, a little discarded toy, can be made into something beautiful, memorable? Things that are little, insignificant in our lives, often are very memorable in, in our lives. This extremely hot summer, <laughs> finally it's coming to an end. And yesterday, maybe you walked outside and you enjoyed the afternoon without sweating <laughs> for the first time. Come to church this morning with a sweater. The season has changed, thanks be to God. Or out of the blue, something as insignificant as a text. Unexpected. Someone texts you and says, I was thinking about you today. You weren't expecting this text. So I asked God to give you strength and I prayed for you in Jesus. What little thing, what seemingly insignificant little thing has made a big positive difference in your life this week? Well, our text speaks of that stone that was discarded as worthless, as insignificant, and yet became the most important chief cornerstone on which the church is built, Jesus Christ. What was seen as unattractive makes the whole building beautiful, doesn't it? Strong and valuable. Yes, we're talking about Jesus Christ, who was rejected by those who were charged with building the church, the very teachers of the, of the church, the Pharisees, the chief priests. They were to build it according to God's word, to point people to the coming Messiah, Jesus. And yet, they thought they could build it better than God, build their own church, right? As we sang in this hymn, surely in temples made um, with human hands, the, it's, they're not going to stand. Only made by God's hands, by His grace, does this house, holy house of God stand firm. Instead of receiving Jesus in faith, teaching Jesus to the people, as was their call, that he is the Savior of the world, they made themselves the chief cornerstone. Look at us. Try to be like us. See our righteousness. See if you can reach our level. They made themselves gods for the people, leading them astray with endless man-made laws and rejected the owner of the vineyard, his son, killed him. They thought they could seize his inheritance. What a sad story this was. 
the vineyard owner had graciously given them this beautiful vineyard, made everything that they needed, hedged it in to protect them from false gods, from, from false teachings, given them a wine press. The sacraments were, were they, they, they were given, they were given the, the sacrifices of animals to, to, to tell them that the coming sacrifice of Jesus would put an end to all sacrifice and he is the forgiveness of all people. A tower to keep their eyes focused on the Savior. And yet they had all these things to, to keep them strong in the faith. And as we heard in our psalm of the day, that they rejected all, all these things. You caused it to take deep root and fill the land, and yet they would not listen. And he had to break down the walls, uproot them, give the vineyard to someone else, plant a new vineyard, a new church. When Jesus came, the leaders of God's vineyard, his Old Testament church, rejected him, and they crucified God's Son. And to this day, unbelieving Jews continue to follow the false Pharisees' teachings that there still is coming a Messiah. They're building a false church that will never stand. Yet Jesus spoke to their hateful hearts, raging hearts of hate, and he said, Have you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Think about what you're doing, reaching out to them, calling them to repentance. But the evil that they did to Jesus, God turned into the greatest good, didn't he? The most marvelous good. For in Jesus' death and resurrection, the New Testament church is founded. The sins of the whole world are forgiven. God alone could do this. All appeared utterly lost. Jesus was crucified, hung lifeless on the cross, placed in a tomb, and a stone was rolled and sealed in the tomb. The rock was rejected and sealed with a rock in death. He was thrown on the, on the heap of worthless stones, wasn't he? Yet God used this evil for good. It was his good plan from the very beginning. He took this rejected rock and brought it to life three days later, didn't he? And proclaimed his victory over all evil. By Jesus' death, he made the final sacrifice that ushered the New Testament church in. There's no more need for sacrifices. For once and for all, Jesus paid the price for the sins of all people, of you and me. This is the good news. This is the gospel by grace alone. We are saved. No more need for bulls or goats. The Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. And as we approach the day of Reformation this month, we once again remember those watchwords of the Reformation. And my wife went to a, a retreat with some other ladies, and one of the ladies was making these nice little cups or glasses and it says the solas doesn't it sola fide sola gracia sola scriptura solas christas solo soli deo gloria the church is founded on these solas what are they well in christ alone sola solas christus christ alone the chief cornerstone by grace alone we are saved by his work alone, not our righteousness. Listen to what Paul says in, in our epistle once again. He says that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, the pharisaical keeping, trying to keep the law, but that which is found through faith, sola fide, in Christ, Christ alone, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. All glory be to God alone. Glory to God 
It is through the scriptures that we hear these wonderful, marvelous truths that are marvelous in our eyes this day also. For we also have seen and heard. Indeed, God has extended his vineyard to you and to me. He has taken it away from those who would not work in his vineyard and given it to others. Others means you, means me. The Gentiles, the Gentiles, God has extended his grace to. He has built this New Testament church on the rock, Jesus. And this church has life through the word and through the sacraments so that through baptism, as we sang in our hymn, we are cemented in to his church built upon Jesus, connected, united with his death and his resurrection in our baptism. Our sins are washed away. The wine press of the New Testament church, the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, which we also receive for the strengthening of our faith, for the forgiveness of our sins, the very body and blood of Jesus in with and under the fruit of the vine, wine itself, his very blood. We who were lost are now found. We who are evil have been forgiven by Christ's righteousness. Our debt has been paid. We have been graciously given the full day's wage of work which we didn't deserve. For God's promise to us is always right, just, and fair. He gives to us Jesus' righteousness more than we could ever hope for. Wow. Part of God's redeemed church. And now God's gracious vineyard is given to each of us to serve in, to work in, to bear fruits in. Because we have the Holy Spirit working in our hearts, given to us in our baptism, to now use the gifts and the talents that He's given to each of you to bear fruit. Each of us has a role to play in proclaiming what has been marvelously shown to our eyes. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Each of you know Jesus. Each of you in your homes, in your circles of friends, in your, uh, with your neighbors. You have been given the opportunity, the joy, and the privilege to be the watchtower to proclaim Jesus. That he has come. And that he's coming again. You can tell others, like Paul, of the excellencies of knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can tell of the power of His resurrection for all people. How what was deemed worthless, a worthless stone, has become the chief cornerstone. What was forgotten is life for the world. How everything, how everything in this world, everything which is held high in honor and adored, is a loss and rubbish compared to knowing Jesus Christ. How on Him alone is found your eternal good, your eternal life. Jesus is telling all this when He says, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease His vineyard to other wine dressers who will render to Him the fruits in their seasons. Those who rejected Jesus are destroyed eternally. But he turns evil to good by extending his kingdom of grace to others that they would receive it by the power of the Holy Spirit, you and me, so that in our season, in our time, that we would bear fruit and serve him in his vineyard. Now is our time to proclaim Christ alone, Christus solus. Now is our time to to. Tell the good news of Jesus Christ to those who are still trying to build their own homes, their own castles, on their own self-righteousness. Here once again, in 1 Peter chapter 2, how God builds His people on the chief cornerstone, coming to Him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Where is the priesthood? I'm looking at it. You are the priesthood, the holy priesthood, God's people. 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Jesus says in our gospel that the kingdom of God will be given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. As the world hears of wars this day, nations shooting rockets at others, declarations of war on others, there is a kingdom that does reign, where grace reigns. And this war has already been won by Christ, and there is peace by his death on the cross. The chief priests and Pharisees led by the devil did their worst and cast Jesus aside, but God used their evil for our eternal good, for the world's eternal good, by his atoning, saving sacrifice. And this good news has been revealed to you and to me, so that you have peace in your heart. Indeed, God makes his temple in your heart. Through all the turmoil in this world, through all the darkness, through all the hate that we see and experience, we know that God is with us indeed. So Peter continues in chapter 2, in the, word, in the verse that follows, it's well known and cherished. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who were once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Soli Deo Gloria. To God be all glory alone. Amen. The peace of God which surpasseth all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church, the vineyard of the Lord's planting, that he nurture his church with the means of grace and that we bring forth fruits in keeping with the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for each of us in Christ, that we strive for the prize, forgetting what lies behind and pressing toward the goal of our eternal salvation and everlasting life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the nations, that those who lead us heed the word of God and preserve us from the all threats to our faith and promote virtue and goodness in all we say and do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this congregation, that we not take for granted all that the Lord has given us and work to bear the good fruit of his kingdom in our lives, together and individually, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who will hear the word of God, that the Spirit prepare their hearts to receive him 
and by that same Spirit confess his holy name, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and all who suffer in body, mind, or soul, especially we commend to your care Don Herbsleb and Renee and April and also Melly. We pray for also Roseanne and continue to lift up Dan Cantu to your loving care. We pray for Erlene and Harriet and Mildred and Loretta. And we ask that you would grant them patience in their affliction, comfort in their pain, and grace to sustain them according to your good goodwill, help them in their, their needs and bring them to everlasting life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, ever more ready to hear than we are to pray, grant to us all good things needful to us and keep from us all, harm, all things harmful, that we may not enter into judgment. Keep us from pleading only our righteousness and cover us with grace, that we may wear the righteousness of Christ by faith and so labor within your vineyard and receive the crown of everlasting life in Christ, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Both loud and long, that glorious 